All right, all set up, recording. I think we're good to go. What's happening, guys? So, as you know, recently, Blackmagic Design released DaVinci Resolve 17.4.1 recently. So, there's a couple new features here in Fairlight, you know, being that I love me some good audio, I'm an audio guy. There's some awesome features here in Fairlight that got added in that 17.4 release and 17.4.1. I don't know, between the two of them, there's some cool new features in there. So I thought I'd give you a little rundown. I got five features here that I think are pretty cool. You can check them out, check out the timestamps if you just want to jump along to each one of them. And I might even have a bonus tip in there at the end for you. So let's jump in Resolve and check this out. All right, so I have a random clip here in my timeline just to show you some of these new features here. I am in the Fairlight tab, which is right here, the musical notes at the bottom. Click on that. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the ability to move around your effects. So you used to have to apply your effects in the order that you wanted them to be applied to your clip, right? You had to go, you know, multi-band compressor, de whatever it is you might want to do. You had to put them in in that order. But now you can just come in here, click and drag it, and move it around. You can change the order of them. You can move them wherever you want. That's pretty sweet. It's just nice to have that option to be able to move stuff around later on instead of having to delete it, then re-add it again, then apply your settings. So that's a feature that I really like. We can move around our effects. Now, in addition to be able to just move around those effects on a single track, we can copy in between tracks super easy. Check this out. Let's say I want to grab my reverb and I want to apply it to another track. If you just hold the Alt key, click on your effect, drag it to the new track, let go, boom, copies it right over there for you. That is sweet because there's a lot of times where I might separate my audio into different tracks. Even if it's, you know, just me talking here, I might want to just separate it a little bit for whatever the reason. And I want to use the same effects. Well, you don't have to go through copy, paste, and all that kind of stuff. It's super easy. Just use your Alt key, click, drag, drop onto a new track. You're good to go. Your effects are exactly the same on one track to the next. So I really like that feature that they added here in Resolve 17.4. So that's the first thing I like. The second thing that I like is if you use VST3 plugins. Now, I don't use many of them, but if you do, now you can use them right here in Resolve. They're supported. You should be good to go to just use them right inside of Fairlight here. So that's number two. That's pretty sweet if you use VST3 plugins. The third thing that I really like that got added is more detail to the waveforms. Sometimes I want to get in there and see exactly where different things are on the waveforms. Check this out. So when we're looking at this level right here, I can see it does look like a little bit more detail to me. But if we also come here and we zoom in more, so I'm going to zoom way in on this guy. Look at the detail on these waveforms. I mean, that's pretty crazy. That wasn't there before, at least as far as I remember ever seeing. But they said they added some detail. And when you look at the view like this, zoomed in this far, and even if you go in farther, right? Look at that. You can see the actual line of the waveforms. That's pretty sweet because there's times where we want to get, you know, the beat of the music right on that point of, you know, me talking or something like that. Boom, right there. And with the waveforms like this and the added detail that they've given you, you're going to be able to see exactly where those points are in whether it's your vocals, your music, whatever it might be, you can find that on those waveforms with the enhanced detail that they have here. So that's pretty sweet. Now, the fourth feature here that I really like that they added, this can be done in either the edit tab or right here in Fairlight. I'm going to show you in Fairlight, but it's going to work in the edit tab for you too. So looking at our clip right here, we have this line right here, right? And you'll see this in the edit tab as well. And you can click on it and drag up and down. And that's going to change the volume of your clip, right? But sometimes when you're doing it, you're getting in there and you're like trying to tweak it just a little bit, right? It doesn't work. It's jumping too much. It's moving, you know, too many dB. So you can try and, you know, zoom way in, make it make the track bigger so you can get a little more detail there. But look, see how it's jumping the numbers right here? Well, maybe I want to be a little more exact. Now we can do that with this new feature that they added. So if you hold your shift key while you click on this line, it's going to allow you to get more precise. So I'm going to click on there and I'm going to hold my shift key. And now look, I can go up in 0.1 dB levels, right? Just moving my mouse up and down. That is sweet that we can be that exact with our uh, line that's right here on the clip. No more do I have to come over here, open the inspector, you know, click on this guy, drag back and forth real carefully. You could just do it right on the clip now. So I really like that. Number four, that's a game changer for me because sometimes you really just need to get those real fine-tuned adjustments. So I like that a lot. Again, you could do it in the edit tab or right here in Fairlight. That's a sweet one. I like that. So number five here is dealing with keyframes 
for your audio. So check this out. So I've got a bunch of random keyframes. I just threw them in, no rhyme or reason to them, just so we can see what we can do with them now. Well, now we have the ability to click multiple points, right? We can click, we can hold our command or control key, control if you're on PC, and you can select multiple points here. And let's say I wanted to delete them. Boom, we can delete them. You can also click on the first clip and let's say I wanna to come to the last clip here, hold your shift key, click the last clip, and that's going to select all of your points as well. Now you can delete them like that, and that, that works pretty good. So being able to select multiple keyframes there is good if you want to delete them or something like that. But let's say I want to grab all of them and move them up and down together, right? So I tried selecting them that way, the way we just looked at, and moving them up and down, and that didn't work. But here's how you can do it. If you come into Fairlight, let's make a little more uh, room on our screen here, close these guys down. And if I come and use this guy right here, the edit selection mode tool, I'm gonna to click on that. And now I'm just gonna come and drag where I want to select my keyframe. So I'm gonna select that right there. And now I can just hover over any one of these lines and it's gonna drag them up and down as a whole. So that's pretty sweet because maybe, you know, overall my mix needs to get adjusted up or down a little bit in a particular area. Using this tool is gonna to allow you to be able to do that. You can grab all your keyframes and just boost that whole part up and down a little bit. So that's pretty convenient. I really like that we can do that here with the keyframes. Another thing that is pretty convenient that is a new feature here is that you can add keyframes to your audio tracks by just holding your option or alt key on Mac, option on PC. So check this out. So I just have this uh, little selector guy selected here. And let's say I wanna add some keyframes along here. So I'm just gonna hold my option key and click and you can see anywhere I click, it's gonna add a keyframe. So that comes in super handy if you're just looking at your waveforms and you wanna add in some keyframes, hold your Alt or Option key on a Mac, and you can just drop them right onto the timeline. That's pretty sweet. Then we can just come in here and you know make our adjustments however we want. And it just kind of speeds up your uh, ability to work with keyframes here in Fairlight. So that's pretty sweet. All right, so here's number six. I know I said five, but uh, I think I'm gonna have six and a bonus for you here. So number six has to do with when you're adding audio transitions in the edit tab and how it appears once you get into Fairlight. Check this out. So we're in the edit tab right now. Let's say I make a cut here in my, my video and my audio. And you can see, okay, I've got two different clips there. Now I wanna apply an audio transition. So come into my effects library right here, audio transitions right here. We've got our three different kinds. We can do crossfades, right? We have the crossfade plus three dB, minus three dB, and just the zero dB crossfade. So let's just say I wanna do a, a minus three dB. Now let's say that I only wanna apply it to one side of my clip, right? I don't want it to bridge the gap of the clips. I just want it on one side. So this is how it looks in the edit tab and you can come in here and you can make your adjustment, right? That's perfectly fine if that's all you need to do. But let's say maybe you need to change it or tweak it a little bit. Well, if we jump over into Fairlight, hit the musical notes down here, you can see it looks a little bit different once we get into Fairlight. It gives you more control on how you can change that particular uh, audio transition. So right here is our transition and if I come in, I can click on it and I can change the way that it looks. So that's pretty sweet. I like that it does that. So now it will look even different if you have a single clip that has you know no clip right next to it. Check this out. Jumping back into the edit page, let's just say I separate these guys a little bit and I throw that same minus three dB crossfade on here, just on the very end of the clip on the left right here. Now I jump over into Fairlight and that clip appears as a fade. So it does have that minus three dB uh, transition that we put on there. But look, now we've got the option to change it. We can do whatever we want here. We can make it longer or shorter. We can you know, make it a different curve as far as how that uh, transition is applied. It just gives you more options on how you can tweak stuff and work with things and just really get the desired result that you want out of those transitions. So I like that. Uh, that's a pretty sweet feature in 17.4 uh, here. So the bonus tip here is not really a Fairlight tip, but it's something that I think is super helpful and hopefully is gonna be a really handy feature. And that is being able to export your markers as YouTube chapters. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm always trying to put the chapters in my YouTube videos because you always get those people who are like, I don't wanna watch the whole video, it's too long. I just wanna get to the point. So I like to put in those markers so that way you can just jump to the point. You don't have to watch it all if you don't want to. But you do have to go through. I put the markers in DaVinci Resolve so I know where they're going to be. I pick out the time code. I write it down. I put down what the title is. And it's a little bit of work, right? You can export the markers and use them that way. But a lot of times I just look at, you know, the edit index here in, in Resolve and just do it that way. But now you can just have Resolve export those markers 
so they appear as chapters in YouTube. Now, I haven't had the chance to play with it too much yet, but I'm going to be giving this a try because if that works and it's able to put those chapters in YouTube, dude, super handy. And anything that saves time in your workflow, I'm all about that. I want to save some time, right? I always feel like I'm crunch for time. What about you guys? You always crunch for time or what? Let's jump into Resolve. All right, check this out. I'm in the edit tab here, different project. I've got only three markers in this project, so it's not a big deal. But if you had a lot of markers, like my crash courses, I pretty much make as many markers as I can. So I've got three markers here, and in order to export them, here's how you do it. You jump on over into the Deliver page, which is right here, the little rocket at the bottom. So once you're in the Deliver page here, I use Custom Settings, where you're going to find the option to export those markers as chapters for YouTube. If you look down here, you're going to see uh, right here below, you have resolution frame rate right here, chapters from markers. So any one of the you know preset options that you have at the top of Resolve here, if you have this option to make the chapters, it's going to tell you right here. So I'm going to go ahead and check that on. And now you've got the option to use whatever color marker you want to create those chapters. Now, like I said, I haven't played with it too much yet, but I'm going to be trying this out because it's going to save a lot of time, especially if you have a lot of markers in your videos that you want to turn into chapters. So for me, I always use the blue for, you know, my, my chapter spots and my YouTube videos. So I would hit that. And then once you're done, you add it to your render queue, render it out. And in theory, from what I understand, it should put those chapters in your video when you upload it to YouTube. So I'm going to give that a try. Definitely see if it works or not. And uh, if I have any issues, I'll be sure to get back to you guys and let you know. All right, guys, that wraps up this video for the features that I think are pretty awesome here in Fairlight. Now, I might make another video because there's other awesome features here in the edit tab and the color tab fusion. There's, there's new features all over the place. And that's one of the things I love about Blackmagic Design is they're constantly pushing the envelope constantly updating things and they don't take forever to do it you don't have to wait for a once a year update they're just constantly pushing out new and improved features for all of us who are using resolve and on top of that you're only paying 2.99 if you get the studio version come on come on who doesn't love that right everything else is going subscription and here you have black magic design they're still saying 2.99 here you go or 2.95 whatever it is here you go you get the studio version of davinci resolve which is an awesome program for life you're good to go one time fee that's it I mean, that's just awesome. You just don't see that in a lot of companies today with their software. Everybody wants to charge a fee, right? It's like money, 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 right? So that's kudos to Blackmagic Design for just doing it that way and really just making it, you know, something that, you know, us regular people can afford. And not only that, did you guys see the announcement the other day where they lowered the price on a whole bunch of their, uh, their stuff? Come on. I mean, what company is lowering prices, right? That's like me want my taxes to get lowered here in New Jersey. It's never going to happen. So that's awesome. I mean, you just don't see that that often. And I did actually want to try out that DaVinci Resolve keyboard because that looks pretty sweet. Might help speed up the workflow and stuff. So I'm going to be getting a loaner to try out uh, here sooner or later from Black Blackmagic Design. And I'm uh, really looking forward to trying that out. But anyway... All that said, Blackmagic Design is awesome. Continue pushing the envelope forward. We love the product. You guys do an awesome job. Tons of awesome features here. Love Fairlight. Love these new features. And uh, I'm going to stop rambling on now. That's going to wrap up this video here, guys. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. What's your favorite new feature? Comment down below. Give the video a like if you learned a little something. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.